Hey family, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Cut Nice 50, and this is one on one with Cut Nice 50. Today, man, we got another amazing video of you that I was waiting to do uh, featuring Tiffany Montgomery and this young lady. I guess her name is Beverly Tucker. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get into it. Another episode by Hardly Initiated. And this one right here is going to be sensitive, it's going to be deep in nature. So, advisory in, is in effect. We don't intend to um, offend anybody. We don't even actually believe most of this stuff so we're just going to watch it share our perception and share the information that they're talking about right now um the title of the video is called uh government's hidden agenda behind abortion and women's rights maybe you've seen it with tiffany montgomery i just want to do another video on tiffany um because i seen the video i guess by my guy smart christians and it, it was like a review of another guy who was it appears to be interviewing tiffany montgomery but i think she was just speaking on her live and he was uh, reacting to that video and she was doing a lot of cussing and stuff like that. Um, I said, personally, I grew up around cussing, so it didn't offend me, um, but I can see it. You talking that if she was a pastor or a minister um, to a congregation that you don't want the, that person displaying that type of profane language on um, why young kids and stuff like that and all that. So it was shocking a little bit, but it wasn't, um, too offensive to me personally because I grew up around that. And Tiffany s seems interesting to me. I just want to get into a little bit of her biblical teaching and stuff like that. So I'll probably do a um a video on her just to see her background, see what she's preaching about, see what she's inspiring others, especially it seems like her she's um geared towards women in particular. Um, but just to see um who's actually following her and what her teachings actually are. Um, like that smart Christians, you already know he's a biblical um, scholar in his own rights, the way he's teaching, and the way he used biblical teachings to break down different videos. Um, so I like that in him. But everybody has their own niche. They has their own different perception when they're looking at things. Um, like I said before, it was a hilarious uh, video when she was doing the cussing and she did a lot of it for shock value. Um, I did that reaction on that. So you can check that out. Let's go. Um, until this video, and I'm going to um, go ahead and share my thoughts just on the title. Do I think there's a government uh, hidden agenda behind abortion? Probably not. I mean, like I say, it's all people who establish these organizations. So uh, I myself only go off of what the institution stands for it represents. Uh, we think of it as opportunity a lot of times for different people. But I myself personally, I don't believe in it myself personally, but that's just me because of my biblical views. Um, but let's go ahead and jump into it. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow if you're new to the channel. Let's go. Tuesday night after the state voted to protect access to the procedure. I was crying tears of joy and shock and just overwhelmed. I was just overwhelmed that we can actually affect change. So this is the thing. This, I mean, did you see the one dude? He was like, yeah. people crying tears people crying of joy to the over joy. abortions. And that worries me. Now, now I understand women's rights. But these people are celebrating killing babies. Killing babies. Yeah, well, you, but you understand that that's not part of the women's rights, right? Well, so I need, I need, I need to understand. But you do of, understand that the killing of babies is not the celebration of women's rights. Okay, I'm women's, assuming women's well, right is the right to vote, the right to have a job, the right to be paid the same that a man is paid. The right to be able to go out and start your business or be whatever, but it is not the right to take a life, another life. That's but that's not right. how it's spoken about or marketed. Well, it's not right, but it's but maybe it needs to be better defined as to what you know. I think that's intentional, right? It and share y'all thoughts about that. Just the way she's breaking it down with women's right. That's kind of my perception of what I got to it when it talks to women's right. I know the topic is uh is sensitive in nature itself, but that's what I see. Or I hear when I hear about women's rights. So I agree with women's rights. Um, but this is, I mean, that's why I want to get into this video. Share your comments below. Yes. That's the propaganda. This is women's rights. So let me let me say this, right? In the Bible, there is a God named Moloch, lowercase g. Moloch is spoken about in the Old Testament, Old Covenant, and also in the New Testament, New Covenant. He's talked about in both covenants. Moloch was the God in the Bible that was assigned to kill your children as a sacrifice. Maybe you wanted more money. Maybe you wanted love. Maybe you wanted fame or fortune. You sacrificed this child. Well, you may say, well, Tiffany, I'm not doing it for this. Well, if you said I can't afford to have this baby 
and you had an abortion, you sacrificed it for the money. If you say my career is really taken off and I couldn't, I can't really use a baby. You have now sacrificed your child for fame, influence, and to be well known. You did the same thing that they did in the Bible. Nothing is different. Mm. But that being said, there was always a consequence to the action. Now, we love to have this conversation. Well, Tiffany, God gave us free will, right? You agree with that. God gave us free will. For sure. The issue with free will, it's a beautiful thing. We thank God for free will. The issue with the conversation of free will is that free will is not free. Just like evil covenants talk. And like I said before, when I heard Tiffany speak on this one, I, I know what they said in the other video and I did the reaction to it. I got a little bit more respect because I can see what type of person she is um, when she's speaking on this subject right here. Maybe it's just me, but share your thoughts. Let me know below if you agree with her sentiment and her perception. It's like evil covenants cost. The, the, the devil wants you to think that walking into a covenant with him is not costy. It's not expensive. It is. But one of the beautiful, one of the beautiful thing about God is he lays out his covenants precept by precept in the Bible. If you make covenant with me, this is all the good that's going to happen. If you break covenant with me, this is all the bad that's going to happen. The devil doesn't do that. He wants you to go into covenant in a dream, make you wake up, forget all your dreams. So you don't know what you did. He wants you to have sex. He wants things to happen to you when you were a child that you forgot about. You can't even break the covenant. He wants you to your parents to leave you. So you don't even know what your family was into because you were adopted in foster care because the devil hides the covenant that you were in. With that being said, free will is very expensive because no matter what the choice you make, it's always a consequence to that choice that you have to pay for. With that being said, the Bible says that the wages of sin are death. The wages of sin are death. If you are having sex with somebody and that is not your husband or your wife, it is fornication, which we have agreed that it means idolatry, which is a sin. That means that you can expect nothing but death. Now, you might not see physical death. Sometimes it's death of the relationship, death of your mental sanity, death of your life, because now you got to do this by yourself because they're going to leave you. Oh. But most cases it's abortion. I don't want to do this. I don't like him or her anyway. I don't want to. I'm, I'm going to have to do this by myself. I'm going to kill this thing because that was the price you paid for your free will decision. That price did not come for free. What that means is now what's on your life is a spirit of abortion or in other words, the demonic covenant with Moloch that you are now covenanted yourself to. Everything you touch is aborted. You're right at the brink of breakthrough and it has aborted itself. You are always starting things, but you never finish them. Well, Tiffany, I've never had an abortion. That sounds like me. Then your mother and father did. And guess what? The covenant still stands. Just because your mother and father died or your grandfather, parents, your parents died, doesn't mean the covenant dies. The covenant is alive until you wake up and break the covenant. Free will is not free. So we love to have this conversation. And it's sickening that believers and leaders are having a conversation that free will is something that is OK to do in the area of abortion, because if that's the case, why don't you let these pedophiles have the free will to molest whoever they want to molest? Woo. Why are there laws? Hey, before she get into that, man, she's cooking. I got that. Man. Tiffany Montgomery, like I said before, she earned my respect on this. This lady is fascinating when she comes to her biblical principles, especially on this issue. I don't know all of her doctrine and all her perception. But I will be doing more videos on it after seeing this video right here. I only watched maybe a little bit of it. I ain't even finished watching this episode right here. But when I say she's preaching, I can see why a lot of people, especially women, are um, drawn to this woman and her teachings or principles or the way she explains different covenants in the Bible. Because I agree with her. Um, you can see that this happened in your day to day life. You forget about these covenants and stuff like that. And she's talking about biblical principles and teaching. So um, I know these scholars, they do videos on about her language per se, but I want to hear somebody talk about what she's describing in this video right here. Do you agree, not agree, or is she right on point delivering this message? Let's go. Put in place that they cannot do that. We have free will. We want to go with that argument. We also, why haven't you put the murderers back out? They have free will to kill whoever they want to kill. Let the chips fall where they may. So the conversation doesn't really make sense. When you put all of that out on the table, rapists, they should have free will to rape whoever they want to rape. Let them out of jail. Let them do their thing. Who are you to say it's wrong? Who are you to take the right away from a man who wants to rape a child, a woman or another man? Who are you to do that? Let this person do what they want to do because they have the free will. You see how stupid that sounds? It sounds ridiculous. With that being said, 
Does God care about babies? Let's go to the Bible. In the book of Luke chapter one, the Bible says that when Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist, God says that this baby is filled with the Holy Ghost while he's in the womb. That means that in the womb, he is filled with the spirit of God. His identity was already set. He will not drink alcohol. He will turn fathers back to the sons, sons back to the fathers. This is what he will do. This was all said while he was in the womb. Let's take it to Jeremiah chapter one. He said, before you were formed, I sanctified you. Ooh. Before you were in your mother's womb, I did that. Then when you got in your mother's womb, I ordained you a prophet. So what it sounds like is the agenda of genocide on babies. The agenda of genocide on babies, which means that if these, we'll just use those two examples. If John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost in, in the womb, and if Jeremiah was sanctified before he was in the womb and ordained as a prophet while he was in the womb, we have to consider those two people the church. Because God's ecclesia is not just the four walls of a church. It is called out ones. It is people that are God's church. With that being the case, there's got to be a reason why there these people are hell-bent on killing the church in the womb. This is a genocide. This is a mass extermination. Anybody that is in agreement with abortion, I don't care whose free will it is, has now likened themselves unto Hitler. So I don't wow. care who you like or who you don't like. You have now become a murderer of God's children. How else do we know that this thing is important to God? When you My goodness. Now, I never even thought about it in that way. But even still, I am against it myself. I don't agree with it. But I didn't look at it in this perception. Is she breaking it down for you to understand? I know it's sensitive in nature. I know we don't even think about the ramifications of what she's saying about the ratification of God's church in the womb. These babies are sanctified. They're holy. They're already anointed. We see that all through the Bible, but we don't vis visually see the difference that these ch children could make in the future or understand when we're actually going through our day-to-day -day lives and we get pregnant by mistake or whatever, even if you agree with it, or whatever the case may be, we can't see the future. So I think that's why most people don't even think about the ramifications or that they're making a mistake because they don't see kids in the womb as holy. And I think I talked to my wife the other day and just the first couple of weeks, whatever the case, the main conversation we had was that it's not a baby. Yet. It's just a yoke. And I had a reminder of that same um, scripture right there that God anointed you before you was in the womb and sanctified you when you was in there. So that's my own perception of it. Everybody don't see it the same way because we don't even think about the biblical um, definition of what babies are when they're in the womb and the process. Let's go. Share your thoughts. Let me know what you think. I know it. she's cooking right now. Let's go. The new covenant and Jesus was getting ready to be born. You had a king on the scene named Herod. Herod knew that there was a deliverer that was getting ready to be born. He did not know where that deliverer was. But guess why? Only God knows everything. The devil is not omnipresent. He's not omniscient. He's not all-knowing. He needs you to tell him what's going on for him to know. So Herod knew that a deliverer was being born. He didn't know who or where the deliverer was. With that being said, God came to Joseph, Mary's husband, in a dream and said, King Herod's trying to kill Jesus. I need y'all to go to this other place until he's dead. Because Herod couldn't find the baby. He said, I need you all to kill all, was it boys specifically? All boys under the age of two years old. Mm -hmm. Kill all of them. That is why you see mass, uh, 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 this, this whole highlight on abortion right now. There is a deliverer that is getting ready to be born on this earth or they're already here. The devil knows it. They just don't know who it is or where it is right now. They don't know. Ooh. So now you have this mass genocide of abortion under the guise of legal right. And as long as you get your favorite witch goddess entertainer to co-sign for the, pre the, the president run up, runner up and they want to label it as just women's health care, then you're going to be blinded because the Bible says I'm also going to give them that hate truth over to a strong delusion. So you're going to hate the truth anyway. You're going to be under a strong delusion anyway. You're not going to realize that there is a deliverer that's going to be born. And to my last point, you have Moses, who was a deliverer of his generation. The Bible says in Exodus chapter one, they were looking to kill that child. They couldn't find out who it was. So the, the person that was over that place, the king or whoever, said, I need you to kill all the babies. And it was the midwives over Moses that kept him safe during that time because they heard God. So there is always.
she, she's on point. I got to agree with him. I didn't know she was that strong in her truth and her biblical um, education. Um, it's, especially, I'd never seen her speak like this because I didn't know too much about her. Just from that one video, I uh, post that. Make sure y'all watch that video right here um, and see her in a different light. But I gained much respect for it. Like I said, the cussing didn't bother me. I know it offends a lot of other people. Um, but I see that what the deliverance she's trying to do with it. But when it comes to this, we see that through the Bible. Moses, we see that that when a deliverer is being born, it is a, a pretty much a mission to destroy uh, infants either in the womb or up to a certain age while they still are toddlers or on this earth as babies. We see that through the Bible. But I didn't even... Think about that perception now today that I believe personally that we are in our last days with the, how the world's currently looking, the way it's shaped, the way we don't even know our identity, the way that um, everything else is going into play with, of course, uh, women's rights, of course, uh, the divide, the great divide, the great falling away from the church. Y'all know what I'm trying to say, but I see that every day that it is a divide clearly. And it's different people who are walking this earth together. We're trying to match the pieces. We're trying to play tic-tac-toe with ourselves, but we keep bouncing against each other because it's not a mix right now uh, for whatever reason. You know, some people are still asleep. Some people are up. Some people are woke. Some people are doing things even out their character, but they don't know why. Um, some people are not believing because we see the hypocritical nature that's uh, occurring in the church right now. Um, we see pastors doing things that pastors shouldn't be doing. We see a different perception in the church like when I grew up that you had to be wholly sanctified. You had to not curse. You had to dress modest. You had to do a lot of things that we used to see in the Bible. And we just think that the change is occurring because it's a modern time. It's a different era. It's a different um, day. We're in 2024. So we think in our head or we relate to it that it shouldn't be occurring because it's in a different time period. Like we know that God's words doesn't change. If he wrote it for the Bible and he wrote it for the church, that, that's the law. So she's actually cooking and she's educating me right now on the biblical knowledge and teachings that I often read every year from beginning to end. I used to read a different Bible, but I stopped lately. But now I'm getting back into my truth, getting back into my um, biblical teachings, reading and understand um, so I can decipher certain things that's going on. I've always been blessed with seeing signs as they um, say, um, just with myself and that my own interpretation, and I can prevent from going this way, prevent from doing certain things or uh, talking or hanging around certain individuals. Um, I feel that energy and stuff like that. I've always been blessed with that. Um, and I, for my intuition, I always lean on it. It ne it's never let me down. Um, I did abstinence uh, for two years and I met my beautiful wife. I only being I only believe in being married one time. Um, but that's just me. I can go on and on about my story, but she's actually helping me and educating me on this information. But share your thoughts. Let me know what you think about Tiffany Montgomery on this hardly initiated episode, which is probably the best episode I've seen them do right now on biblical teachings let's go generation after generation after generation if i'm not mistaken and you can cite me on this um einstein was in germany during the holocaust and they got him out there's always a deliverer born that they're trying to kill and until believers see the root of it obviously we're all looking at trees and leaves and fruit and all of those things and now i'm not holier than thou i've had abortions right i understand now the revelation of abortions that's why i speak out so against it now other people use the the, uh, the fight of well tiffany what about those that are raped and what about those that are already have a dead baby well obviously they call it abortion if you already have a dead baby in your womb that's not an abortion the baby's daddy needs to be extracted out of you that is not an abortion though that is a dead baby that needs to come out if you are raped Unfortunately, that sucks. That is only about two to three percent of the cases of abortion. So they're trying to magnify this thing to be bigger than what it is. The truth is, mm -hmm. it is the negligence of the 97 percent who is an idolatry, who want to have sex outside of marriage. And they are paying the price of that through the power of death. With that being said, even if a 10 year old or a 12 year old or a 13 year old or a 15 year old got raped because you do not give yourself willingly over to somebody at that age. I don't care who you are. They got raped. They are not impregnated. Tiffany, what do you say? Shouldn't you have an abortion? The truth is no. Here's why. It is a spirit at work. If that child has an abortion, likely 
before the person was raped, before the child was raped, before the little girl was raped, there was already a series of atrocities on that bloodline that caused that to happen to that person. It is a habitual demonic pattern that needed to be broken. Because demonic covenants expire, they are looking to renew themselves after 20 years, 10 years, 70 years. And when it got to that little girl at 10 years old, it might have been the 69th year and it needed to renew. So let's get this little girl pregnant. Let's rape her because this is on the bloodline of all the people that raped and molested and sodomized. Now it's her turn because that spirit is on her. And most of you that can attest if you were raped, molested, or had any type of incest, that is in the bloodline. Believe it or not, everybody doesn't have that in their bloodline. There are bloodlines that are never touched by this demonic spirit. But now like I said, I don't know anything about this, so I can't agree or disagree on it. It's hard to believe um that um you know when we look at life we we don't wish harm on nobody. I don't agree or support none of that occurring, but I never thought just because it's a hard topic to even think about a child being in that situation. Um, and I myself as a protector, I don't want that to happen to no children. You know, that's just something that I don't. But do she have a point in this? Do you believe in this? Have you heard of this? Because it's the first time I heard about covenants, not really renewing itself and demonic spirits and stuff like that. But in this perception and in this deliver deliverance, how she's saying this is the first time I heard someone preach on this right here. Share your thoughts. Let me know if you heard of this before. It's a perpetual pattern because nobody stops it. Now this little girl is pregnant. Now you take her to the abortion clinic and guess what happens? You have now renewed the covenant with Moloch. And it has now surfaced in her life forever. Until she and wakes up, children. watches a podcast like this, listen to us and say, I need to break this and her children until you break it. So that is why abortion and the conversation around it is so important to have amongst leaders and believers. And let me be the first to say, I think it's absolutely disgusting when you hear believers and leaders champion this desire to exterminate a people and have mass genocide of God's ecclesia. You are no better than Paul before he became Saul, who was a Hitler of his time, who was killing God's church. I don't care how many times you sit in church and I don't care how liberal you are. You are no better than Hitler himself because you have decided not to save those that could not save themselves. God charges us as believers yeah. to take care of the little ones that cannot take care of themselves. And Preach. you are disgusting to think that you shouldn't. And for those that think that we should not cry loud and spare not about it, Ezekiel chapter three tells us if they are under divine judgment and we do not warn them, the blood is on Tiffany and Bev's hands. So we don't care how you feel about it. No way. I will not be held under judgment for not telling you that you're wrong. Again, I've had my fair share of abortions. I understand it. I do not walk in condemnation because God has not only freed me from the curse that was upon me, but also I'm justified. It's just as if I've never had it. I have no residue of it on my life. The reason I share it is because I understand how powerful testimony is that you can watch this and say, I've had abortions too. And if God can use Tiffany as powerfully as he's using her, that means that I shouldn't be condemning myself. Yeah, there's hope for me. That's the only reason I share my abortion, but Beth, take it away. And I'm going I'm to add this to your point. I'm going to add this to your point. In the United mm -hmm. States, estimates indicate approximately 900 and 30,160 abortions occurred in 2020, averaging around 2,548 abortions per day. That's about four in 10 unintended pregnancies end in abortion. That's right. And let me say this again. There is no way that abortion is about health care. I don't care how many times you want to say it. I don't care if you blue, black, white, or purple. Abortion is the murder of an innocent child. Abortion is, a, is the murder of a child that God created for you. You do not have the right to take a, a life that God gave. And for those of you that say, well, what are you supposed to do then if you get pregnant? Probably stop having sex. You should probably stop being irresponsible with your body anyway because yeah, the man that's have sex, we don't want you no way or he would have married you. Let's be clear. You should probably stop sinning. So how about you take personal responsibility for your life, stop putting yourself in those positions and stop having these babies and stop putting yourself in these positions. But let's be very clear. Health care is not abortion. Abortion is murder and you are Hitler if you agree with it. Honestly, that's that's not the main thing. It's the health care and it, women's rights. That's the... The, the ways they, the they way, try to the dress it up. And I was talking to you about that as well, Ryan, because we had an abortion conversation earlier today. And it's, right. you know, you talk about what you stated prior about cause and effect. Mm -hmm. We have free will, but we don't have control over the effect. And essentially, abortion is us trying to uh, change God's effects. Yeah. His circumstance that he already created. This is what happens when you have sex. And we're trying to put our own will, Limit. impose our own will on what can happen, which is 
pretty much going against direct. And I this how hard it is for women to get pregnant is safe. Everybody who has sex unprotected, whatever the case, don't get pregnant. So I just look, look, I tell people to look at getting pregnant as a whole different situation. All us who are here currently living today, we're going through this life together. How often do you think about what it took for us to be here at this exact moment, at this exact time? How often it took your parents to even get pregnant to conceive you, the problems, the miscarriages, the struggles that they had to do in life, the things that could have happened that prevented you from being here today as far as maybe you got in a car accident like myself when I was young, got hit by a car, ran over, I done broke shoulder bones and broke many other bones have been. I mean, it's different scenarios in my life. That's what I say. I never uh, forsake or forget God because I'm lucky to be alive today. But in any instance, so maybe that bullet would have hit a different part of me and I wouldn't have been here today. Maybe a knife, whatever the case is so many close incidents that I couldn't even be here today, but we take that for granted. That car accident that you could have knocked you off the road, but you're still currently here. We don't think about the small things that we often don't even thank God for each and every day, waking up another day. Um, but we don't even think about the process that it takes for a kid to actually be here. I know parents who can't get pregnant and they want to have a children so bad today. Now, what our adoption it's a hard scenario to think because everybody, especially a man, I told my wife the other day, I think in the heart, if men who want kids, they want their kids to look like them. They want to uh, make sure their bloodline carries on, um, stuff like that. But the next step could be adoption. Maybe you could be a, a parent to that child. So I know we're aborting them, but why not save them and stuff like that? I know it's a, a, a touchy topic and everybody's situation is not the same, but this has woke me up so much into the different um, perceptions when it comes to pregnancy, abortions, um, the gratitude that we all should have to be in the lie today, even though it's hard, even though we might be struggling, living check to check, even though we ain't got a raise or whatever else in different years, even though we're not in our perceived state that we want to be in currently with our career path, currently in our fitness or health level, currently in different a a aspects of our life. We're not where we want to be, but I guess it's where we should be currently at this moment until we start investing in back, back in our prayer life, until we start thanking God for the blessings that we have each and every day, until we start looking at life in a new form, a new perception, in a new light, and actually being thankful for walking each and every day in our purpose. Um, I think once we start doing that and realizing that we have a certain power, whether we believe it or not, we are worthy to be here and we're here for a reason. Um, so I hope that that's what people understand and they take from this video and they see the um, these individuals talking about these things and look at life in a whole different aspect when you finish watching this video. But share your comments, share your thoughts, and let me know what you think. Let's go. Against what God here has already ordained. You can, get as, really many, you can get as many as no cap on it. It's not. If everybody is watching the, the cheering that they did, whether you agree with us or not, right? Just stop for a second and say, I ain't cheering like that. That's what I said. Run that back real quick. Yeah, just it's, 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 uh, it's, drop your scary. opinions, drop your feelings, yeah. and just ask yourself, why are they cheering like that? It's sick. Dude, it's, it's sick. jumping up and down. You can cut it, Lano. You can cut it. It's group hugs, dudes jumping up and down. Couple of dudes, I don't even witchcraft. think they're trying to have babies. It's total witchcraft. But let's get into health care, okay? If you go and you look at statistics of women who have abortions, a woman's chance of getting breast cancer increases 150 mm. times if she's had an abortion. These are medical statistics that never get told. Also, and the reason she does, because death, has come into the womb. Death has entered right. into her. Mm -hmm. And so cancer is a very prevalent disease, which they never tell about. The emotional aspect of it, depression, and, and all those other things. Uh, I shared a story with you yesterday about the woman who uh, we ministered to that had had an abortion and she kept losing baby after baby after baby. So they don't tell you that either, that once you've had an abortion, your chances of never being able to have a baby or if you do get pregnant, you'll probably miscarry it. They don't tell you the high statistics of that. Talk about health care. All of that is part of your health. So I ministered to a woman one time who 
I was training some people on, on deliverance and they were doing deliverance on a woman who had had an abortion. They had called death out of her and, you know, the breast cancer, all of that kind of stuff out of her and they weren't getting her free. And this is what I was talking about, the captivity where her soul had fragmented and uh, was basically in trauma from, and that's another thing they don't tell you is the trauma women go through as that baby is being, they don't tell you the high statistics of that. Talk about health care. All of that is part of your health. So I ministered to a woman one time who I was training some people on, on deliverance and they were doing deliverance on a woman who had had an abortion. They had called death out of her and, you know, the breast cancer, all of that kind of stuff out of her and they weren't getting her free. And this is what I was talking about, the captivity where her soul had fragmented and, uh, was basically in trauma from, and that's another thing they don't tell you, is the trauma women go through as that baby is being taken from them. But anyway, so I went over to her and she felt like she, I think she had seven miscarriages. Wow. And so she felt God was punishing her because of the miscarriages. God doesn't punish you. That is the result, again, of our choices. And when we make a wrong choice, we put ourselves in the hands of the one that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what the enemy does. And then he tries to blame it on God. Mm -hmm. So I said to her, I said, okay, I knew where she was. She was trapped in that her soul was trapped. The Bible talks about the soul being fragmented, the soul being front, uh, shattered and also the soul to being torn in pieces and that and also trauma i told you about that how psychiatrists will say there when you go through trauma there's a portion of your life that stays stuck because of the trauma she went through i don't know how many abortions she'd had she was stuck there in the abortion clinic so i told her i said close your eyes and we're going to get up and come out of there so i started having her say by faith i'm going to come out of that abortion clinic and then we got up and walked her out and when we began to walk walk her out she began to wail and wail she was so broken over the babies that she never was able to hold because she had miscarried and miscarried that it was so sad we all began to weep with her and so we kept walking her out and i said tell me when you're out of that abortion clinic she finally said bev i'm out and because Jesus is the healer of the broken person, mm -hmm. we asked God then at that point to reintegrate that broken young woman back into her full soul and reintegrate her and grow her up. And she said, when we got done, she said, Bev, I could hear the sounds of the sucking machine and I could smell the smells of the abortion clinic. Mm -hmm. That's how real. See, what they don't, pe doctors don't tell you is there's a spirit realm also. Now, these people who are having a good old time, right. which is nothing but the occult. And they want the sacrifice of babies because they want the most innocent and the highest blood that you can offer is the is the blood of the innocent and the little children. And the now, I know heard of just years and years and years. A lot of people believe in the blood that has the power of blood and stuff like that, drinking and all this and that. Maybe you don't, but people actually believe in that and they believe in the ritualistic blood blood sacrifices um even with that being said man um i know plenty of people who had several miscarriages over and over it was a and this personally and this was a uh, devastating for them to experience and to go through and um i always tell my wife to tell their friend uh her friend that um you know god has a plan you know um i know you might want to give up and then she eventually had one but the struggle to get there was uh traumatizing especially for a lot of women so i commend them um, to keep in the faith, to keep trying, to keep pushing and believing in God to restore their life and whatever the case may be. But I never thought about it, about that um, perception of it with the covenants on the years on that bloodline on the family and stuff like that, even if we never did anything um, personally. Um, but, you know, the sins of the father, you hear that stuff like that in the Bible all the time. But this, that's why it's different perception when it comes to Bible. That's why we should read more. We should educate ourselves more. And the reading, like they say, always is fundamental. I know people think that the Bible aspires, um, like it's no teachings, it's nothing relevant to you today. But that's far from the case. We need it to actually live, especially in this life like here today, because now we can look at things through a different lens. We can learn different biblical teachings to open up our eyes so we can prevent from putting ourselves in compromising situations. But this right here, man, is a powerful, powerful, powerful episode. And I want everybody to re look at it, 
Uh, the full links will always be in the description below. Uh, check out Tiffany Montgomery and this um, other lady, lady right beside her, Bev Johnson. Um, and we're going to go ahead and continue. Let's go. This is why they want the blood of these babies. It is a known fact that blood of these aborted babies is drank at at many at many of your Hollywood studios when they they do rituals they sacrifice all over even in um, governmental places which nobody likes to tell that but they drink the blood of these babies from these aborted clinics they don't tell you that kind of stuff they also drink the blood of these baby these little children that are being either sex trafficked you know we have three hundred thousand children that they cannot account for that across the border. Where are they? They're either sex trafficked or they're dead. One or the other. Okay. They've been probably used in rituals. Who knows? But so you better look at really what is behind, what is the real root of this kind of a sacrifice? What is the demand of this God that says, I want blood and I want to destroy a generation of deliverers that are here because we we are in an hour right now, and I, I told you this the other day too, where I ministered to a woman we, uh, that that uh, I believe we're in the last days without a doubt with the stuff going on, but I could go for hours. Let, let me tell you this. Go to Washington, D.C. sometime and look at all the Freemason Mason stuff that's structured all over there. Freemasonry is nothing but total uh, witchcraft and occult. The first thing that went up in um, Washington, D.C. was the Washington Monument that is in Freemason Obelisk. So our whole government there, that whole city is based on occult practices, okay? So you have to look at the occult influence behind these things. But I ministered to a woman from Africa a few years ago, and and she told me, she said, Bevan, it was actually during the 2020 elect election, and there were people, entertainers and uh, other witches and people in governmental positions going over to Africa to learn how to do, uh, go to these witch doctors and learn how to do uh, ancestral magic and other forms of witchcraft in order to take the souls of babies and, and put them in amulets. And so that's another thing altogether. How do you fragment a soul? Well, the world already diagnoses it as disassociated disorder, but it's the soul being trapped. And she said the reason they were doing that is they said that they had a window of time that they had to take the dispensation we are in right now and get quickly get it shifted to this next dispensation. What is the next dispensation we're going to go into? The dispensation of the Antichrist. So they're trying to skip something in between here because they're trying. So what are we promised in here after this dispensation? Revival. Revival. And they're trying to skip and, that. Yes. And they're trying to jump us out of the revival into this next dispensation to release. Do you know we're already working on a one world government? We're already working on a one world health system. All of it. Everything is coming into play. They know exactly what they're doing. When the Democrat, the DNC did their thing in Chicago, and everybody knows it, it was wide open. They had a mobile abortion clinic. Wow. So what did they do? Offered blood sacrifices as they did, because let's look at it for what it really is. It isn't women's rights. It's blood sacrificing for Molech, for, for the, for Lucifer, for the Antichrist. So that they, because they know they get power, just like when they say that they do voodoo and these people do the animals and they eat the animals to get the power. The more that you can take a pure blood. Now, sorry about all this other information, but she is speaking facts and truth. And this is already documented information. You know what I mean? Uh, like I said, before I uh, left Georgia Bureau investigation, that's what they did track a lot of child trafficking and situations. I actually um, talked to plenty of these young girls who was actually looking to help some of the parents who was, had their kids talk to um, or who were involved in sex trafficking or being trafficked by uh, older boyfriend or adults um, for money and situations like that who is borderline on the age of still kids but young adults or, or old enough to give consent per the state law um, so it's different situations different topics man that uh, we don't even think about but she's on to something it's different people who have different beliefs 
um, all throughout the world that we actually currently live in today. It's almost over. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this one out um, right here. But um, I know it can be uh, a lot of things that we don't want to think about this, but this is the life we're living in. It's realistic and it's true. A baby and offer. It's going to give them more power. So this woman said we're, what they're trying to do is shift us from this dispensation into the next one. They said we only have a window of time to do it. That's why they're working so hard. That's why so much of this, it's why massive push of women's rights. It's not women's rights. It's massive push of murder babies, murder babies, murder babies. But they're trying to put it under women's rights so that they can make it the whited sepulchers. Do you know Jesus said, you hypocrites, you whitewashed sepulchers. What is that? Meaning we look good on the outside, but we're dead on the inside. Mm. And so look at what's being pushed. Like, this is all okay. It's women's rights. No, it's murder. It's murder. And it's time the church, who, who, who's like uh, Elijah said to, to the prophet or to the Israelites, why do you halt and limp between two opinions? If God is God, serve him. But if Baal's your God, go serve him. So in other words, if you're a Christian, serve God and live by his standards. If not, then go ahead and be an unbeliever. Go ahead and do those things. But don't try to call yourself a Christian and live contrary to the word of God. And like I said, that was an amazing video right there. I'm glad y'all was able to go through it with me. Um, <sighs> Tiffany Montgomery, um, I mean, she turned me into a believer of what she's talking about right now for this episode. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing more videos on. I get what they're talking about with the language. Like I say, we different people can paint different things in a different light. Um, and we can either agree or disagree or see things differently. But I say don't just give up on people because maybe they do a video you don't like. Maybe they say some things that's not uh academically right or they use different languages um that they shouldn't be using or you think they shouldn't be using at times but let's stop condemning people we are in the, the age of cancer culture we all know it um we see it every day but i just say we can always agree to disagree we can always see things in a different light we can always have our own perception that's what makes us so so unique we all can have the same experiences we're living at the same time and we see things totally different. That's from being a twin with somebody, sharing DNA with somebody, being a male or a female. Um, we all see things uniquely different for us based on our own personal experience. So let's stop judging people. Let's start criticizing people. I myself personally, even if I don't agree with you, I don't um, understand what you're saying. I'm not going to condemn you. I'm not going to criticize you. I'm not going to talk down to you or demean you. That's just me personally. Um, maybe I'm in the wrong. Maybe I'll, I'm in the right. But that's just me. I'm not wired that way to put other people down. I'm about uplifting, motivating, and inspiring others to the best of my abilities. It might not be the way you want me to, but that's just what I've been led to do and why I'm on this earth. Um, always. When the fitness, health, and wellness, that's why I became a nutritionist. My own battle on the perceived system is say is to keep people healthy, to keep them uh, focused on enhancing their own life or their kids, family, future generations. Um, because I know it, it plays into a big part of your emotional, your spirit, spiritual and physical energy. If you're not eating right, you're not taking care of yourself. It affects everything in your life. So I think everything for in my eyes comes together. I think your physical, mental and your spiritual um all work together as one so, you know we only have one temple i heard it all the time when i used to talk to people hey we all gonna die one day but that's not make it today that's still do things in moderation and i agree we are creatures of habit so we can always kind of fall back or slip and slide on um, doing the things that we used to like to do or that we're used to do until we break those old habits and change to new ones that's why it's about creating better lifestyle habits so we can do better and be better but i'm gonna stop rambling on if you like the video don't forget to share comment share your thoughts let me know what you want to think hey we're going to be focused on doing some interviews coming up so you want to be a member to the channel we're just starting that let us know what um you think and we can actually reach out to more people and do them but you know with all that everything costs a little bit but we're going to invest regardless um and we want y'all to join us on the journey hey it's your boy kind 50
Thanks for tuning in to one on one with Pet Nights Fifty. Y'all see my regular drink in hand. Let's get this wig and it's time to get back fit. Hey, it's your boy. With that, we out.